I'm Jorge Salamero. I work for Sesdeik. Um, how many people know Sesdeik here? No, oh, that's good. That's quite a few. So I'll show you uh, some basic ab uh, about Sesdeik. But today we are going to talk about something. It's like kind of an experiment, little project. It's called Sesdeik tracers, and we came up with this thing because traditionally Sesdeik means they have been doing. Troubleshooting, not tracing, because this means they didn't just do tracing with these kind of tools. Applying free, well, you know all that. But then suddenly something changed, uh, and these tools, they become less useful with Docker containers and all that. But then, um, in addition, we got microservices deployed everywhere, and it was time for a change. Developers started to use, because they had new needs, they started to use sort of different tools. And they started to use tracing heavily because when you have distributed services, you need to know how they talk to each other, where are the problems, troubleshoot like in between. There are quite a few options, some of them open source, uh, big ones uh, compatible with open tracing, which is in standard API. A few commercial, probably you know, New Relic, AppDynamics, and obviously people, because they didn't have heavy and very specific needs, they just, to, they just had to monitor something, they started to do all sort of hacks, like using the StatC, JMX, prints, who hasn't done prints to see what their code is doing, or misusing logs for that. But we thought, what if we have something that was obviously open source, so everyone could use, that it was very simple and easy to use? Um, who knows, or who is using uh, more or less often VCC here? Okay, no one. Uh, it's great, eBPF, e it's a great tool, can do amazing things uh, more way more than Sysdig, but it's difficult to use. You need to know the API, you need to know every system call you want to hook into. It's complex, it has some trade-offs. Also, we wanted to have something very lightweight that could run everywhere uh, inside containers. So we have the Sysdig technology, and we thought we could do something else. Not to get confused, we have Sysdig open source tool, and then there is another commercial tool that I'm not going to talk about it today. We'll focus on the, on the open source. For those that didn't know how Sysdig works, basically what we do is we instrument at the kernel level, we load a very small kernel module that allows us to capture every single system call and everything associated with it, and send it into a user space agent that can run as a daemon or inside a container, and even save it into a file and do all kind of analysis and everything. Um, some of you, probably this is going to be a question later on, so I'm going to answer already. Why we didn't do this with BPF? Well, when Sysdig was created, uh, BPF didn't exist. Even now, uh, the way it works has been changing a lot lately. Um, who has kernel 4.11 deployed in their servers in production? That's what we need to do everything we do with Sysdeck. So that's why we have a different kernel. Hopefully that in the future changes, but this is how things are now. So at the end, Sysdeck, everything it does is capture system events that they are uh, system calls, we filter them, we can apply all sort of filters, and run a scripts to reshape, aggregate them. We can dump things into a file, so at the end it's like TCP dump for syscalls. We have container support, and we have a command line and courses interface. How things work internally is that we have like an event stream where all the system calls that you're introduced, open reads, connects everything, every single call. And we dump them into a disk, something like pick up file, we filter them, we do some analysis, 
And with this, we thought that we could do some tagging on, this, uh, on these events. So we created the Cystic Tracers. This is like not distributed tracing, um, it's system called tracing, which we think it's enough for most of the cases. Obviously, we are not trying to compete with New Relic or full um, distributed application tracing, as I said before. We want something simple, lightweight, easy to use, that can work for like daily use. So the idea is to inject markers inside the cystic even strip. These marks, they can basically scope, they mark anything. So we can mark function calls in our code, we can mark network requests, any piece of code. Um, you can do this from any language. Um, and when we started to design Cystic Tracers, we thought about creating a virtual device in a slash dev. But we wanted this to be uh, container compatible. And we thought, well, dev null is always available everywhere. Uh, no matter how minimal is your container, it's going to be there. We can capture every single syscall, so why not you use a dev null? It's a hack, but it works. Um, and low overhead, like, as I said, simple, easy to use, fast. So the idea is that we have this even stream, and every time, always, we have like an entry marker and an exit market. So a span is everything that's being executed inside. The enter trace and the exit trace. If you notice, like the symbol just before the trace, uh, it's useful to understand if it's an entry or an exit, this is the span. And we can obviously uh, have like a tree of different spans and a uh, nested structure to measure different things. When we write to slash dev as null, we can do it in two different ways. We can use a very simple format, so parsing it's not very complex, where we have a direction, an ID to identify the span, some tagging, and we also have arguments. So in case we want to have function entry arguments and function exit arguments. We can also use JSON format, but the other one is more simple. And I'm going to show you an example. Uh, when, when I was deciding what kind of title to use to show you cystic tracers, one of the examples I like to start with is this one. Um, and it's, uh, when I saw this, I thought, well, this is like APM for bash. Uh, so let's call this APM for sysadmins. It's not entirely accurate, but I think it's a good an easy way to describe what sort of things we can do. Um, so yeah, if this is a loop, there is an echo, which is a write, of that string into dev null. Um, we use a tag, then we do whatever we want inside, which is load the page and then the exit. So when we run this, we are going to mark all the system calls happening in between, and we will be able to do things with them. What kind of things we can do? A few examples. Well, we can measure latencies. So in this case, in the example before, we can measure how long does it take to execute that command. We can save things to a file and analyze later on. Um, we can open it with the end courses um, app. We can see like, what's happening inside all the system calls that that executed. We can see logs in case that was a diamond doing stuff, uh, road, or export it into stat-c, because we also misuse stat-c, and have it in our monitoring system. So that's everything I have on the slides. And now we have 15, 20 minutes. Uh, and I'm going to show you how this works live. So I'm going to take a seat, because I don't know how to type properly standing up, and let's move here. So I showed you before that, can you see this better now? Yeah. 
Which one is the light? Okay, yeah. Now. But the thing is. What, what, black and white is better. Okay. Uh, and if you move your, your window a bit to your. Let me see if I know how to change this. Okay, so that's the script I showed you before. I made some changes that PP is to use as the ID, the parent process. So I got that one. I'm going to run it. Going to leave that behind, running. And I got another bash script here, which it's loading Google. Same thing, different tag. I'm going to run it as well. And I have those scripts that they are running or they are triggering traces. So now what I can do is to open CSSDIC. This is my laptop. And for example, we have multiple views here. If you have used htop before, you will find this very similar. We have multiple views with different things. Uh, Keep that for a different talk uh, because I don't want to go into all the details that says they can do. I just want to focus on tracers. But one of the most nice views we got is histograms. So histograms allows you to see the latency. Mm, we are missing something. Uh, no, it's there. We go. No. So we can see the latency of the network. We can see that some pages, they go fast. Most of them, they are around 100 milliseconds. Some requests, they take longer. And I can do all sort of things like, and this is when I'm going to open the notes I have because we see only half of the terminal. So this is just for me. You can ignore it. That's easy. OK, so for example, I mentioned before we had command line and courses interface. So the command line, there we go. If I say, OK, filter everything, actually, I want to give you a second to have a look at this. Event type tracer, I want you to filter out all tracers. So. I see this, the command, the ID, the different tags, and this is live happening. But Sysdic has a lot of filters, so I can do different things. So if, for example, if I want to see only the tracers from the script uh, loading the Sysdic website, I can do event type tracer and then and span dot tags Sysdic. If you have used uh, TCP GAN before, this is it's, this is going to be very, very similar. The syntax is very intuitive. And now we are filtering only cystic. But probably I want to do more interesting things. I want to know how fast are we loading. So what I'm going to do is to format the cystic output and include a span duration. So I want to see how long does it take to execute everything I have inside. OK, so this is around 200 milliseconds. Cool. Um, I can write things into a file. OK, so can you see this on the bottom? Or just dumping everything into a file. And then I can use the end courses 
interface. Something happened here. Okay. So I'm going to capture a few seconds of Moya scripts. That will be enough. And now I can open it. And I can show you the spectrogram that I showed you before. This is a very small sample, but I can do interesting things, saying, OK, so most of the requests, as I said before, they were around 100. But I'm wondering what was this. So I can click. And then I see that, well, for some reason, there was a request to Google uh, that took 283 seconds. But we can do all the things. Like, for example, I can say, OK, I want you to send all this into Statsy. Uh, Sysdix has some scripts written in Lua that allows us to manipulate all the events, all the syscalls. So basically, everything it does is to take all the tracers, convert them into stat C, and I got here somewhere. <coughs> we'll see if it works uh, very quickly, otherwise, you will have just to believe me. Um, that we are exporting those latencies. No, my laptop is not connected. Well, you will have to believe me. Uh, this is basically exporting all the metrics into Statsy. I want to show you more interesting things. So, yeah, right into slash dev slash new. Still have a few more minutes. In addition to do things manually, we also have some libraries and wrappers for different languages. This is for Python. We also have for Node.js. We also have for Go. Um, you can use it in different ways. I can show you a more complex example later on. But this is, if we use this with a statement, uh, we can tag all the, key, all the code ex executed inside with this hello world and do things with it. So let me run this script. So you see there is one hello world from inside, another one from outside. But what I can do is to, I'm going to minimize this, open. So I can say, OK, so they show me all the events, so all the system calls being executed inside that span. That was just a print of Hello World. So if we just do one iteration, oh, there we go. So we can do, we can see it's a write to slash dev slash pts, and then the, the tracer exit and the data of the, of the write system call. So this is very simple, but we can again use chisels to filter and format this into a nicer way. So I have the echo FDS chisel that everything it does is to capture those um, system calls that they are writing into any file descriptor and echo them into a nasty format. So, hello world. I can only see hello world and know the hello world from outside. So, this is a simple, this is a very simple example, but since we have, how long do we have? Okay, I'm going to show you a more complex example. So, I wrote here, um, a Python web service that has three different endpoints. One is doing, um, it's calculating a Fibonacci number uh, just to demonstrate how we can use decorators to 
uh, tag with Cystic Tracers everything inside this function, including entry and exit arguments. Or, as we saw before, using the with statement to scope different pieces of code. And as I told you at the beginning of this talk, we can use a tree a hierarchy of different tracers, and we can have some tracers inside of each other. So I'm going to run this. Let me remember how I was running this. OK, looks good to me. OK, so I'm going to run everything. Like I, ha I got the server I show you. And I got the client, which is doing random requests to the different URLs. Uh, both they are different, uh, they are different microservices running in different containers. And we got SenseDate running on the host. And we are going to be able to see what's happening. So I'm going to record a few seconds. of all the tracers being executed because it's more convenient to work on a file. Just a few seconds would be enough. And now, I'm going to console this, and now we can start working with that file. So, for example, I can do this filter that it's going to show me all the spans that took more than five seconds. So, I can see like the different tags I showed you before. Download handler, Fibonacci, the different pieces of code that it, it was taking longer. If you can see here in between my scripts running on the background, they are showing from time to time. Very slow requests on the network. Um, but we can do more interesting things. We can do, use again chisels and we can group um, we can group um, the different uh, system calls that they were writing into any file descriptor and create a very simple report. So we know that the piece of code inside of do download write, it wrote one gig in file descriptors. We know that the download write wrote uh, 500 megabytes, obviously headers did not write almost anything, empty headers, the same, Fibonacci, we got less requests, etc. We can even see that Hello World is writing to, again, in the background, some other stuff. We could use filters. And for example, what I can do is say, okay, this is writing on any file descriptor. But what if I want to see only network traffic? Well, I can do file descriptor type and then IPv4. And I'm going to get exactly the same report, but only for sockets, IPv4 sockets. If I'm interested in seeing like file descriptors that they are actually files on my file system, I just use FD type file. But I can do more even more fancy things. So I'm wondering, okay, so what kind of files are you writing on the, on the file system? So I'm going to add some extra filters, FD type file, and then I want to see only the files written by that, by that tracer. And I want to exclude my terminal because I'm not interested in anything being written on the standard output. So I'm going to run this. And I see that my code, that it's a black box. It's running inside of a container. Some developer created this, started to run it on my infrastructure, and I have no clue what it's doing. But now with Cystic and Tracers, uh, I didn't have to read the full code. I just went around different functions, and I were adding decorators and with statements. And OK, and now it's writing some files. And wait, one of them is quite big. So, it's probably the one that's making my microservice to go more slow. We can use different or other different chisels 
uh, to format the output. Uh, so for example, if I use the HTTP log and I write it properly, I'm going to be able to see all the HTTP requests happening, like method, URL, response code, latency, size. Or I can use only show me the top URLs. So we can see that this was uh, the URL that my random URL generator uh, hated more. There are plenty of different chisels. You can write your own, but we created the fear that they are shipped by default. So I show you uh, decoding HTTP requests. We can decode uh, uh, memcache requests as well. Uh, writing one, for example, for Redis should be very simple. We can visualize things in spectrograms. We can show top CPU process, uh, errors, activity on file descriptors, spine logs. If there is a diamond writing some logs and we don't know where they are being written, uh, we will find it. Some network filters, performance, or security. Um, well, I think this is everything I wanted to show you today. Uh, I think we have some around 10 minutes for questions. Questions, anyone? Yep. Yeah. Um, this now. We need oh. um, okay. Hello? Okay, uh, my question is, um, if I'm having this running on like a couple of systems that I want to trace, is there an option to parse this to something where I can filter it like in, I don't know, Kibana or something? Is there like a front end where I can just compare the traces of different machines to see events and um, stuff? We wrote a front end to aggregate uh, tracers coming from different microservices. It's a very, very experimental project. It's open source. It's available in our GitHub. Actually, I haven't linked it here, but if you go to github.com slash BIOS, browse between the repositories, and there is some JavaScript application that can load uh, some JavaScript application and some Lua chisel that write things into a format that the Java application can load, and you can see the requests from different microservices but it's something experimental. We created this, as you saw, it's small. It does quite a few fun and interesting things, but it's an open source, it's work in progress. We are still figuring out where this is going. Okay, um, another question is, um, um, what was it? <laughs> um, I hit it, now it's gone. Yeah. Okay, we Sorry. have more time. You can grab me afterwards, otherwise. Uh, yeah. um, I wonder, for very large systems like uh, those that have 10,000, maybe 100,000 of uh, requests per second, is, is there any possibility to sample while recording, just recording 10% or 1% of all events? What you can do is to filter everything you write on the capture file. So. I don't know how big was my capture file, but you saw it was just a few seconds, and you see, it's 100 megabytes. So imagine running this into a production system. Uh, we have customers that they trigger this, and they get like gigabytes in just one or two seconds. And then you, you need to open the file, and you need a powerful machine. So um, ideally, you want to apply capture filters, so you reduce the amount of information that you are sending into a file. Use filters. No, it's okay. <laughs> So you told that the, uh, to install this, you are inserting like a kernel uh, module. So uh, how do I install it on like legacy stuff? Do I have to, uh, on a Red Hat 4 or 5 or something like this, does that work or does we, it just work with recent kernels? The uh, Sysdig is packaged for 
the most popular distribution, Debian, Ubuntu, Fedora, Red Hat, and OS. But also um, for old ones, like like really old ones? So I don't know what's the minimal kernel version that we require. We use DKMS, so we dynamically, dynamically build your kernel module. So I don't know, I will have to check out. Uh, okay. Give it a try. Thank you. Uh, I think you have some questions. Hey, I'll take a look. OK. That's OK. Um, when you're using Docker, for instance, can you filter to certain containers? Can you repeat your question? Uh, when you use, for instance, Docker, can you uh, filter to just see the events for a certain container? Yes. Um, so I showed you this before, the different chisels. So for example, if you use that chisel, allows us to filter the different containers I have run in. But actually, one of the things I haven't mentioned in this talk, and I'm talking about it later on, on another talk, Troubleshooting Kubernetes, is that the other cool thing that Syslic does is we talk to your orchestration tool API. In this case, Docker, but if you're running Kubernetes, OpenShift, Mesos, DCOS, we talk to it, uh, to the API. We know what kind of infrastructure are you running, the pods, namespaces, services, and you can use that metadata in Syslic filters. So you can say, OK, give me the syscalls from this pod, or give me everything happening in this namespace. So yeah. Another question here? So uh, I didn't get the main idea behind this uh, dig. So is it built on PPF? Because you said several times that it's similar to TCP dump. And we know that TCP dump was using PPF firstly. And second, just what about the, over the overhead that this dig just create? Or it, there is a, uh, it, does it take a long time to, to do that? Or it takes a, a lot of resources? I, I don't know. Well, the project started like five years ago, something like that. Uh, one of the reasons to not to use PPF is that PPF didn't exist as it is today by then. Uh, has changed a lot. It exists, but in a different way. Um, and we had requirements that they were not covered by EPPF or PPF by then. Uh, so, for example, when we capture a uh, syscall, we want to see like everything, all the buffers, and for example, EVPF can only give you a small chunk. We have been submitting uh, patches to the kernel, and now we are in a position that probably Syslic uh, could start using BPF, EVPF. Uh, we haven't done it yet. Uh, we have to look at it properly. Uh, but yeah, the reason was that originally it was impossible. And this is like multiple years uh, project. Uh, the team uh, who created, uh, or the person who started uh, Sysdic, Loris, he was one of the creators of Wireshark. So you will see a lot of similarities between TCP DAM and Wireshark to Sysdic. It's more or less the same concept, but instead of capturing and analyzing network packets, we do it with system calls and everything happening. OK, well, if there are no other questions, uh, I left some links. Uh, please, the usual other stuff, like leave feedback if you found this talk interesting or you thought it was crap. Uh, have a look, test the, uh, these links, test the product. And as I said also before, I'm doing two other talks, one on Cystic applied to security on containers, 
and another one used for troubleshooting instead of tracing. So have a look at the schedule, and if you like it, um, you can join. Thank you.